Bethany Bowman here for Sports Radio 810 WHB and a cool story we've got here today. We like cool stories around here and a very special guest joining us. But before we introduce him, you know, we all here in Kansas City know the Kansas City Monarchs. They are a part of the American Association Conference and uh, they play the Sioux City Explorers, one of their conference rivals. Uh, every guy in independent baseball kind of has an interesting story. If you, you know, talk to all of them, uh, a different pathway for all of them. You know, a lot played in the, the professional ranks and uh, the minors, maybe the major leagues. Uh, just, just, you know, everybody's got a different story. This one, though, is pretty crazy. When I read this, I knew I had to get this guy on the show here to talk to him about this story. J.D. Scholten, he's out of Iowa. He's an Iowa State representative. He's also a professional baseball player as of recently. J.D., thank you so much for joining us here. It's an honor to be on. <laughs> Okay, so we got we got to tell the viewers here what's going on. Yeah, representative, you are forty four years old. That's not yeah. old. Oh. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Like every story, like every like it, it's been crazy because like Sports Illustrated has written about it, the Washington Post, uh, Barstool. Um, I'm missing out on stuff, and everyone leads with forty four years old. <laughs> but I mean, that is that's a huge part of the story. So I, I get it. <laughs> Well, it's not old. I just want to say that. Young at heart. Young at heart. <laughs> but it is, it is a little bit old for a professional baseball player. So you, you got to right. think of it that way. You played for the Sioux City Explorers back from 03 to 07. You were also on the University of Nebraska College World Series team. So you had quite. Yeah. I just I, I didn't think maybe you'd ever maybe you probably didn't think that you'd ever be playing at this age. But you got a, a crazy call the other day. The Sioux City Explorers needed a pitcher. And so they yeah. call and you go out to have an absolutely phenomenal outing. Uh, 106.2 innings, only give up two runs, struck out a couple guys. Just take us back to that moment that you get, get this call and you're going to go play uh, pretty much out of nowhere. Yeah. So we have a huge music festival right around July 4th every year called Saturday in the Park. And I volunteer there. And so I was there when I got the call and they said... <laughs> Well, I was volunteering. I just delivered a bunch of ice. I looked at my phone just to see what time it was. And I saw I had 10 missed calls and a text from Mongo, our, our manager, saying, hey, give me a call ASAP. And so call him up and uh, he's like, hey, we need you to pitch tonight. And uh, I mean, I went to the game the night before. I had a couple beers and brats and <laughs> just as a fan. And uh, no way did I think the next night that I'd be starting for them. And and uh, I actually threw a bullpen because I, I I play town team baseball. So I, it's not like I just walked off the street. I've been playing all, all year. Uh, but I, I was I got my bullpen in the night before. And usually I want two days rest. Uh, I lifted that morning. <laughs> but uh, and so like that's that was the thing that worried me. And in, in, in all honesty, before the music festival, I had a beer and a half as well. Uh <laughs> Because I didn't think I was going to be pitching that night. But uh, um, it was one of those things that it happened so fast that maybe that was a blessing. And I didn't have to overthink anything. And just um, I, I, I think the experience I have pitching was really taught me just to um, throw with what you got that day. I mean, you know, I wasn't trying to hit 100 or anything like that. Lord knows <laughs> uh, I can't do that. But, uh, uh, you know, I, what I can do is spot my fastball that, that I get some movement on and change speeds and that that worked out the other day yeah so it, it's it's a saturday night right it was a saturday mm -hmm. okay. yeah having a beer as you should enjoying your weekend right. uh, that's that's hilarious i mean did you go out there uh you got it probably uh, what a couple hours to maybe let it settle in a little bit yeah well the first hour was trying to make sure i got my stuff and because i had to fight the traffic of the concert to go to my place to pick up my equipment and then I had to grab something to eat. And then uh, then I had there to sign the contract. And then right when I got out there, signed the contract, signed the the uh, waiver form for all the injuries and stuff like that. I, I just, it was 16 pages and I had to go through that really quick. Uh, then, uh, then I went over the scouting report with pitching coach Bobby Post. And then by that time it was, okay, let's start getting ready. So Steve Montgomery, longtime coach there for the Explorers, but he didn't coach you um, back when you played in 03 to 07. Have you guys uh, kind of had a relationship with, you know, how did he, I guess, kind of, how, how do you think you popped into his head for uh, his emergency starter that he needed? 
So a couple of things. I played in the league when he was the closer for Fargo. <laughs> and so, and we, we traded, we had a trade mid season trade. So uh, a bullpen trade, we needed a lefty, they needed somebody. So we traded. So uh, I ended up like one of his good buddies was came to our team and I got to be friends with. And so like um, that was part of it. So I, I knew, I knew of him before. Um, I also threw out the first pitch last year. And so I hung out and talked to him a little bit in, in the coach's office last year, but I've been hounding them the last few years just to get a, a an inning or, or a spot start or something like that. Uh, but it wasn't going to work out. And, and uh, I ended up last summer, it was my, um, so it was after my first session in the Iowa house, I asked right when I got elected, I was like, Hey, what are my obligations for the summer? And they said, the first, first year, you don't really have anything the next year. Then now it's an election year. So I have the campaign and all that jazz for the election in November. But, uh, so last year I ended up getting a great opportunity and I played in the Netherlands for, for the last, uh, two months of the season. And so that experience really brought back to, okay, I need to work on this, 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 and this. And I've been doing that. And I feel like I'm throwing the best I have in my life. I may not have the, the 92 with movement that I used to, but at the same time, uh, I have enough uh, experience and know how to th throw uh, off my off speed and all that jazz and, and just know how to pitch now. I know I was going to bring that up. So as cool as it is of a story, it's not like you're, you know, you've, you've been chilling on your couch for five years. Like right. <laughs> bullpens and you like you said played in the Netherlands for for the Dutch league and um I guess why did you want to stay active in baseball was there always I guess a dream that maybe you'd get another call or is it just something I've, I've always had this sense that there was more to my pitching ability like even when I played in the association when I was younger um like I I just I felt there was more um, and it's always kind of bugged me, but I went seven years without throwing. Um, I ended up, uh, COVID, I was running for Congress when COVID hit and about, I don't know, a month or two in, I went down a rabbit hole on a Saturday night on YouTube. And I just was looking at pitching clips, uh, and, and pitching mechanic videos. And that just kind of turned into the next day, buying a couple dozen, uh, balls, uh, pro balls and a net and just started throwing. And then from there, uh, I lost my election. I wanted to see my folks more, and they live up in Minnesota. And Minnesota has amazing town team baseball. So I was going to spend uh, a, a lot of time up there and stay up there. And, and uh, uh, my, uh, I reached out to my old team and said, hey, I don't know what I got, because uh, I played with them when I was younger. And I, was, I go, I don't know what I got. I haven't played in seven years, but what I have, I'll give my all. And they're like, of course, we'll take you. And I went 10 and one with like a 1.5 ERA. Um, and I was like, oh, well, that was, that was fun. <laughs> I don't know if I'll do anything more, but, uh, uh, that's kind of cool. So, and then it's just kind of snowballed and, and I just been working on stuff and just trying to stay active. And, you know, when you get to this age, I, I just want to keep on pushing my body to do different things. Uh, last year I had, I ran the best 5k of my life, uh, the year before for my 43rd birthday, I, um, uh, uh deadlifted 430 pounds uh for the the year before i ran the best mile of my life so it's just you know i, I just I, I like just challenging myself that's good news for someone like me who feels like i'm getting worse at you know <laughs> better than uh you know for you to walk in, walking into that field uh oh. you know you know any of the guys i know you said you watched them the night before yeah. um but like I, what are they saying to you what are you saying to them well, it was really interesting. So the tone, they had two rough nights, the two previous nights. I think they used 10 pitchers uh, in the two, two games before. And so uh, the, to bring in a 44-year-old state representative, I'm sure none of them were like, oh, great, this is going to be a good game. Uh, so, but they, but like a lot of them were just grateful because the bullpen was so thin and everything. They're just like, like, hey, we appreciate you doing this. And then there about the third inning, it kind of shifted. We took the lead and then we tacked on a couple more runs and it got, it started to be more and more. And like, I, I gotta be honest, the boys scored some runs and that just made me relax and just throw my game. Just like here, here's just go ahead and hit it. See how far you can hit it. Hopefully somebody can catch it type of thing. And, um, and by the end, 
guys were saying, hey, what are you doing in five days? <laughs> so it was a very interesting transition happening in that. But like the guys have been great. Uh, Mongo and the staff has been great. And uh, the comms department has been great. Like everybody it has been a uh, just an amazing experience. But like to, that standing ovation I got when I, I uh, when Mongo took me out, like it just it still just gives me shivers. Like I've, I've never experienced anything like that. It was so just like my hometown, you know, I love Sioux City. I, I literally represent it <laughs> um, in the state house uh, down in Des Moines. But it's also uh, like just to have like tomorrow, I'll be having Sioux City across my chest when I pitch against Fargo. And that is so meaningful to me too. I love this city and and it's treated me very well. You mentioned it right there. It's not over for you. The team said, hey, we come on the road with us to Fargo, um, you know, pretty lengthy road trip not the longest by any means uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, it, it's uh it's weird because i mean that night after the game mongo it, we're kind of trying to figure out like okay what's next <laughs> and a part of the like we didn't know if jared the, the guy uh who got hurt and wasn't able to pitch it, we didn't know if he would be ready and so we're just kind of uh seeing things so we're kind of like well let's figure it out tomorrow and uh, he said, how about Thursday up in Fargo? And I go, like, I have a day job. I work remotely, so that I have a little bit of flexibility. But we also had flooding here in Sioux City, and my, I need to do some constituent uh, work uh, for my state legislative stuff. Um, we're, 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 even though, like, the state legislative, the sessions are only part-time, there's still stuff to do all, all the time. So it just, I, I said, hey, do you mind if I just come up on, on uh, uh Thir or come up on Wednesday night and then uh, I can throw Thursday. He goes, yeah, no problem. And then he goes, then you don't even have to go to Lake uh, County and you just can go back to Sioux city. And I'm like, Oh, that'd be a huge help. So, um, so that's the plan right now. No idea what happens. Uh, just right now I, I tell everyone my two priorities uh, this week. Number one is making sure that the, our flood uh, victims have, or the people who've been impacted by the floods, they have the resources they need. And thank goodness FEMA just got accepted or it's FEMA assistance just got accepted. So they're gonna get uh, uh, some help. And then uh, my number two priority is making sure that uh, uh, we take uh, we take it to Fargo uh, tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so what sparked your interest and in, uh, your passion and career in politics? Ooh, uh, the short version is uh, as a Democrat, I was living out of state and when 2016 election happened and my grandma's my everything. And when I was playing minor league ball, she allowed me uh, to stay with her and we got really close after my grandpa died. And, and I was playing when I was playing with the exes before and all the minor leagues, um, she, we just we got to be very close and she wasn't doing too well. And after the 2016 election that Thanksgiving, I went to visit her and the last thing she said to me was you need to move back to Iowa and you need to take care of our farm. And we rent our farm out. I'm, I'm not a farmer I'd, and I'm not going to hop on a combine anytime soon. Um, but it, uh, it, it just meant a lot to me because that was the last thing she said before she passed. And at her funeral a month later, that's where I felt that pull to come back home. And it just snowballed, like taking care of the farm. I looked at, uh, Pretty much there was, I talked to a lot of the neighbors and stuff and found out like just, um, I'm very much an anti-monopolist and what happens, like farmers are getting squeezed on the input side and they're getting squeezed on the market side. And so that just kind of fueled things. And I was like, well, we can do different. And so that's kind of how it stemmed. And uh, my 2018 campaign, like nobody gave me a shot um, and we just kind of came out of nowhere and we ended up moving the needle 24 points in this district and, and barely lost. And just, I got a lot of national attention with that. And it just, um, I've just kind of been letting that ride and in, in uh, kind of turned into the state house now. Yeah. National attention now should be even more with you going out. Well, it, it feels like this week feels like the last week of the 2018 campaign. And so, um, yeah, it just it's such a unique experience and everything that's happened. It, it's just, um, yeah, I don't know. It's 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 a whirlwind for sure. Well, a couple questions, you know, based mm -hmm. on that I can't leave this call without asking you. Number one, was yeah. the first 
freaked out when you, when you got that call? I mean, was, were you like, I got to thank the spirit for a second or was it, oh, I'm going to come pitch tonight? It was a, why did you call now? <laughs> like I threw yesterday. I worked out yesterday. I worked out this morning. I drank last night. I drank this today. Like, um, but because uh, like I, before my starts, I even just my town team, I take it very serious where 48 hours, uh, I don't drink. I, I really focus on mobility, maybe a light lift at most. Um, and like, I, I take it pretty serious. Uh, but uh, the, the thing that w when opportunity knocks, you got to open that door. And there's a line in a movie that I really love that says, how do you make God laugh? Have a plan. And Saturday was the epitome of that joke. <laughs> uh, and then two, what is your kind of pitch combo? And do you also know what maybe you topped out at? I know you said it's not quite yeah. what she used to be at, but um, I, I'm very curious to know. So I'll be the first to admit, I didn't look at TrackMan. I didn't look at uh, the scoreboard or anything like that. Because like to me, like I I'm not setting records here. <laughs> I'm trying to get out. Uh, but, uh, in the sports illustrate article, they talked to the explorers and, and, uh, they said that I topped out at 89. Uh, I was mostly 85, 87, uh, the whole game. Um, uh, I'm, I'm my money maker, I guess, <laughs> literally now, I guess, uh, uh, is just my ball, my fastball runs. And so, uh, even my four seam moves and my, my, I get, then I got a sinker as well. So my two seam or sinks. Uh, I have a slider to go off that, uh, a change up. Um, and then the thing that I've really added since last year in Europe was a cutter. And uh, that just another pitch to get off my fastball just a little bit and just to, um, uh, another thing to make hitters think a little bit more. And uh, yeah, that's that's it. But, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's simple. It's It's spot your fastball and change speeds and try to stay ahead. And when you're behind, uh, if, uh, just don't put it in the middle. <laughs> so, What is the biggest thing that, you know, these two things that you're doing, politics and professional baseball, like how have they kind of gone hand in hand or, or taught you um, one thing to kind of correlate to the next or translate over and they just kind of work together? Yeah, well, in running for Congress, minor league baseball was the best experience for me because, like, it's a grind. It is an absolute grind. And these seasons are long uh, for baseball and, and playing minor league ball. It's, it's, there's ups and downs and, and uh, getting yourself motivated to do it again and again and again and again. Um, I, I think there's a lot of similarities there. Um, for, but now, like, being in the state house, like it's my release, like just play, just being on a mound and throwing is my release. This year, uh, I helped my cousin's uh, kid out at a baseball facility and I found out like, oh, it's 24 seven. You just have to punch in the code and it's just a bunch of batting cages and they have mounds there. And so during the state legislative session, our hours are crazy. And so uh, I, but I got a, a membership there for a couple months. And I've thrown bullpens there at 6 a.m. And I've thrown bullpens there at 10 p.m. But it's like, okay, I just need this release. Just take it all. And just with politics and everything these days, uh, it allows me to throw pretty hard because I, I just, it, it's so frustrating. And so that to me, this is, it's, it's a release that I very much need mentally. Did you, I know it was last minute, but did you have any fan club or anybody in the stands to watch? So here's the crazy thing is that, it ended up making the news, the five o'clock news for a six o'clock game. And I had, I mean, there was a bunch of people who came because uh, they saw it on the news. My college roommate uh, showed up who I haven't seen in a, in a hot minute. Um, uh, I have a couple, like a lot of political supporters uh, uh, came out. But I mean, we we're also up against a huge music festival that's free. <laughs> and uh, 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 Bleachers were headlining it. And so, like, I mean, this is a huge festival. And so, like, we the, the the amount of fans that were there, and like, they were so into the game. Like, I, I, like as the game progressed, like the fifth, the and the sixth, and the seventh, like they were so just energetic. And and uh, if a guy got on base, they were yelling uh, like six, four, three, like double plays and stuff. And like the crowd, it was just, it was so cool, a great atmosphere. And then 
for me personally, though, um, it, I'm glad the game was at six because I was able to go back to the festival and, and catch bleachers as they finished up their set. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, got to do both in one day. Uh, yeah. So we'll be coming to Kansas City uh, beginning of August, 5th through 7th, I believe. And I know we talked off camera. It's You don't know what's yeah. going on. Um, this is such a, um, you know, change. I don't know. Um, but it would be really cool to see you here in Kansas City. I w would like to see uh, you and your team first, the reigning Miles Wolf Cup champions. Um, but just yeah. talking about this, you know, American Association, independent baseball, every night there's at least a couple of major, former major leaguers usually on each team. Just how good of oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. So. Uh, my good friend uh, who played at Nebraska after I did is Tony Watson. He played 10 years in the bigs, uh, all-star with the Pirates, played with the Dodgers and uh, Giants. And he, he was kind of asked, like, how'd it go? And I was like, well, I, I go, I kind of forgot how hard these guys hit the ball. <laughs> and uh, and I go, I go, this one guy, like, hit the highest ball ever off me, but he only went to first base. Like, it was a pop-out. Uh, but I was just like, that was sky high. And I, I put the guy's name in and he goes, oh my goodness, I played with him for two years with it's San Francisco. And, and that guy was in the bigs two years ago. And like, it's just insane. <laughs> like, uh, th that, that connection happened, but the, the fact, I hope I do make it to Kansas city because here's, here's another thing that, uh, a couple years ago, my town team ended early and I'm good friends with Jason Kander, uh, <laughs> And uh, he run, he has a team called K, uh, Casey Hustlers, and I came down and I pitched at Satchel uh, Page Stadium uh, in Kansas City, and and those guys all want to come watch me play. So um, a shout out to to those guys too. Yeah, very cool, awesome. Um, any last words? I guess you have for us here. Uh, what a crazy week for you. I'm sure it's been a lot of fun though. I'm guessing you oh. never expected it to be yeah. like. It, it's a blast though. Um, I haven't told my day job yet uh, about what happened. I work remotely uh, and I just asked for Thursday off. So uh, I think that call is happening this afternoon. So I just asked everyone to pray for me because uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, I have my day job, but I have my, my state uh, rep job. Uh, I have a sub stack called you're probably getting screwed that I spent. <laughs> it's my political part of my political stuff. And then now I'm a, uh, a professional baseball player. So I keep busy these days. That's funny. Um, I'm going to bet that they've probably seen something online about you doing this. No, not yet. <laughs> but like, it's getting big enough. Uh, Washington Post is supposed to, my, the law firm I work for is out of DC and the Washington Post story is supposed to come out, I think, later today. I think that's when uh, they'll they'll catch wind. So. Better make that phone call. <laughs> My boss was busy this morning. I, I otherwise she would know by now. Well, thank you so much for taking some time to join us here today. This has been a blast. Uh, you know, I saw this story on Twitter and yeah, crazy. I I I love these. These are these are kind of <laughs> these are the stories that make sports great. So absolutely, absolutely. Thank you so much for reaching out, and uh, uh, you know, hopefully, I see you in about a month.